So maybe well, can, what are spinners? Let's start with spinner because I, th I think that if we can introduce that, then I can. By the way, say, twister is spelled with an O, <laughs> and spinner is spelled with an O as well. Yes. Okay. So in one, case you want to Google it and look it up, there's very nice Wikipedia pages as a starting point. I don't know what is a good starting point for Twister 3. <laughs> uh, um, well, what, what thing you say about Penrose, I mean, Penrose is actually a very good writer and also a very good draftsman. He's a drafts, he, he, to the extent this is visualizable, he actually mm -hmm. has done some very nice drawings. So, I mean, almost any kind of expository thing you can find him writing is is a very good a good place to start. He's a, he's a remarkable person. But the, um, so spinners are something that independently came out of mathematics and out of physics. And um, to say where they came out of physics, I, I mean, what people realized when they started looking at elementary particles like electrons or whatever, that there there seemed to be there seemed to be some kind of doubling of the degrees of freedom going on. If you counted what was there in some sense in the way you would expect it, and when you started doing quantum mechanics and started looking at elementary particles, there were seemed to be two degrees of freedom there, not one. And one way of seeing it was that if you um, if you put your electron in a strong magnetic field and ask and ask what was the energy of it, instead of it having one energy, it would have two energies. There'd be two energy levels. And, and as you increase magnetic field, the splitting would increase. So physicists kind of realized that, wait a minute, so in, we thought when we were doing first started doing quantum mechanics that the way to describe particles was in terms of wave functions, and these wave functions were complex to complex values. Well, if we actually look at particles, that that's not right. They're 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 pairs of complex numbers. They're pairs of complex numbers. So you know why? So one of the kind of fundamental, from the physics point of view, the fundamental question is why are all our kind of fundamental particles described by pairs of complex numbers? Just weird. And then, but if you go and then then you can ask, you know, well, what happens if you like take an electron and rotate it? So how? How do things move in this this pair of complex numbers? Well, now if you go back to mathematics, what had been been understood in mathematics, you know, some years earlier, not that many years earlier, was that if you um, if you ask very very generally, think about geometry of three dimensions, and ask, and if you think about things that are happening in three dimensions, in the standard way, everything, the standard way of doing geometry, everything is about vectors, right? So if you've if you take any mathematics classes, you probably see vectors at some point. They're just triplets of numbers tell you what a direction is or how how far you're going in three dimensional space. And most of a, everything we teach in most standard courses in mathematics is about vectors and things you build out of vectors. So you express everything about geometry in terms of vectors or how they're changing or how you put two of them together and get planes and whatever. But what had been realized that on is that if you ask very very generally what are the if you have what are the things that can, that you can kind of consistently think about rotating and um and you can so you you ask a technical question what are the representations of the rotation group well you you find that there one answer is they're vectors and everything you build out of vectors but then people found but wait a minute there's also these other things which you can't build out of vectors but, but which you can consistently rotate, and they're they're described by pairs of complex numbers, by two complex numbers, and they're 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 the spinners also, and to make a lot and and to make and and you can think of spinners in some sense as more fundamental than vectors because you can build vectors out of spinners. You can take two spinners and make a vector, but you can't you can't if, if you only have vectors you can't get spinners. So there, in some sense, at, there's some kind of level of lower level of geometry beyond what we thought it was, which was kind of spinner geometry. And this is something which, even to this day, when we teach graduate courses in geometry, we mostly don't talk about this because it's a bit, it's a bit hard, hard, to, hard to do correctly. If, if, if you start, if you start with your whole setup is in terms of vectors, getting describing things in terms of spinners is a whole different ball game. But um. The but so but any, anyway, it was just this, this amazing fact that this this kind of more fundamental piece of geometry, of spinners, and what we were actually seeing if you look at electron are one and the same. So it's a it's, I think it's kind of a, kind of a mind blowing thing, but it it's very uh, un counterintuitive. What are some weird properties of spinners that that are counterintuitive 
th- there are some things that they do. For instance, if you rotate a spinner around 360 degrees, it doesn't come back to where it's, it, it becomes minus what it was. Before. So it's, anyway, so, so the way rotations work, there's a kind of a funny sign you have to keep track of in some sense. Um, so they're kind of too valued in a we- another weird way. But there's a, but but the fundamental problem is that it's just not. If you're used to visualizing vectors, you just there's nothing you can do visualizing in terms of vectors that will ever give you a spinner. It just is not going to ever work. As you were saying that, I was visualizing a vector walking along a Mobius strip, yeah, and it ends up being upside down. Um, yeah. But you're saying that doesn't really capture. Yeah, so I mean, what what really captures it? The pro- the problem is that it, it's really. The simplest way to describe it is in terms of two complex numbers. Mm-hmm. And our, your problem with two complex numbers is that's four real numbers. So your spinner kind of lies in a four-dimensional space, so you that makes it hard to visualize. And it's crucial that it's not just any four dimensions, it's just that it's actually complex numbers. You're really gonna use the fact that these are the complex numbers. So it, it, um, <laughs> it's very hard to visualize. But But to get back to what, I think is mind blowing about twisters is that the another way of saying this this idea about talking about spheres another way of saying the fundamental idea of twister theory is in some sense the fundamental idea of twister theory is that a point is a two is a two is a two complex dimensional space so that every and that it lives inside the, the space that it lies inside is twister space so in the simplest case it's Four twister space is four dimensional, and a point in space time is a two complex dimensional um, subspace of the four, of the of all the four complex dimensions. Mm-hmm. And as you move around in space time, you're just moving. Your planes are just moving around. Okay, and that and but but then the so it's a, it's a plane in a four dimensional space. It's a it, yeah plane Com- it, complex complex uh, plane. So it's two complex two dimensions complex. in four complex. Got it. But then, to me, the mind blowing thing about this is this then kind of tautologically answers the question: Is what is a spinner? Well, <laughs> a spinner is a point. <laughs> I mean, the space of spinners at a point is the point. In twister theory, the points are the complex two planes. And and you want me to? And you're asking what a spinner is? Well, a spinner, the space of spinners is that two plane. So it, it's you know just your whole definition of what a point in space time was just told you what a spinner was it's they're, they're just it's the same thing yeah but we're trying to project that into a three-dimensional space and trying to intuit but yeah, you yeah. Can't. So, yeah so the intuition becomes very difficult but um but from if you don't you not using twister theory you have to kind of go through a certain fairly complicated rig- rigmarole to even describe spinners to describe electrons whereas using twister theory it's just completely tautological they're just what you want <laughs> to describe the electron is fundamentally the way that you're describing the point in space-time already. It's just there. 